You are listening to Keep Canada Weird, a weekly weird news roundup by the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the weekly Keep Canada Weird discussion series. If you're new here, Keep Canada Weird is the venue in which my pal Aaron Airport and I seek out and explore the more offbeat news stories that played out across Canada over the past week. But in tonight's episode, I'm going to present something a little bit different. In between our weekly weird news roundups, Aaron and I also use our Keep Canada Weird time machine to travel back to some interesting moments in Canadian history. The results of these journeys are short episodes that get posted to the Nighttime Podcast's premium feed and the Keep Canada Weird podcast feed. But as you're soon going to hear, one of the locations we travel to opened far too many doors than we could close in an abbreviated episode. So this week, we're going to forego our weekly weird news roundup and take you back in time with us to 1998. We're going to listen in on a discussion that presents the problems the internet is creating and raises the question, should we just get rid of it altogether? So let's get into it. For now, put your phone in airplane mode, unplug every connected device in your home, and listen in on 10 reasons to ban the internet. And when we finish, you can decide if you want to stay connected. Jordan, we've got our time traveling box with wings and wheels. And lots of technology in here. Lots of technology. Here's a question. Does our time traveling machine have Wi-Fi? It does. Good, good. Because I like the internet. Mm -hmm. That's a good segue because where we're going right now is going to maybe make you question how much you like the internet and if the whole thing's worthwhile because there's no question there are pros and cons to our society our humanity even being so mixed up with the internet uh let's travel to 1998 i want you and i to sit down and listen in as cbc publishes a rather lighthearted but insightful take on 10 reasons to ban the internet so again, this is broadcast in 1998, so we're going to have to go back there. But looking at these 10 reasons from a modern lens, I think it's going to get us a lot to talk about. So let's see why in 1998 we should have banned the internet then. Here we go. Let me first say I'm a bit of an internet junkie. Uh, let's say I'm a lot of an internet junkie. I can go online for hours at a time. However, I'm not here to tell you about the wonderful things you can find out there today I'm here to tell you my top 10 reasons why the internet should be shut down. Reason number 10, there's no control. Try this little experiment on the internet. Type in these three little letters, S-E-X. Watch the pornography just pour through the telephone lines. Racism and sexism and terrorism are just about as bad. Such is the double-edged sword of free speech. So reason number 10 that he gives to ban the internet is there is no control. Uh, he cites the pornography, racism, terrorism, all that stuff happening. I would say back in 98, there was probably less control in surveillance and censorship than there is now. Yet those things are also all still very prevalent. Like I think in the in 98, it would have still been like the Wild West for the most part. Now it seems like it takes it like it still is, but now it takes a bit more effort to get there. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're, you know, a teenager living with your parents, and you want to access certain content online, there could be restrictions put in place. Certain websites you're not allowed to go to, but there's always ways to skirt around that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but as, a as... teenager is going to access pornography, whether you like it or not, whether they have the internet or not, it doesn't matter. It's always one of those things where the pornography industry always grabs a hold of any new technology that comes out. And then people always use that as a reason to ban that technology. But it doesn't matter. The pornography industry is coming for your children, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. Good. Well said. I do remember in the era before the Internet, I do remember uh, some neighborhood kids and I found pornographic magazines in the woods behind my house. I would rather my children find it on the internet from their laptop in their bedroom than in the <laughs> woods with a group of their friends. Yeah, well, I remember when we were 
uh, I don't know, maybe 14, 15. We hung outside of a convenience store one time asking oh. uh, people walking in if they would go in and buy us one. <laughs> buy us like a Playboy magazine or something. Oh, my God. And we would only approach people who we thought would say yes. So we wouldn't approach, you know, like a like a mother coming in with her two children or something. Or what? Just think the person who agrees to buy pornographic material for kids, what would they even be charged with? Like they would go to jail for a long time if they were caught doing that. Well, the reality is, is nobody agreed. Okay, to good. Buy us the magazines. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, let's get back to it. Reason ten the lack of control. I think there's there wasn't control then, there isn't control now. With or without the internet, these things are going to exist. Not a good reason. I'm not ready to ban the internet. Because I guess we can, if we decide to, we can take this time machine back further and assassinate whoever invented the internet. So I guess we do have some control and decision-making power here. Yeah, we have a time machine. Yeah, let's go to reason number nine. Reason number nine, it's antisocial. You can get so caught up in those chat lines speaking to some unknown person in some unknown country, you may forget that you have real friends and real family. Here's an idea. Instead of emailing that person, why not pick up the phone and talk to them? It's antisocial. I disagree with that. Uh, I feel like... The majority of my friends now are people that I've met online, communicate with online, even my close friends that like you, we're, we're now, you're in Cape Breton, I'm in Halifax. Mm -hmm. Were it not for the internet and technology, we wouldn't be able to do the things and stay in touch the way we do. I'd have to call you and it, that would suck to call you. I'd rather see your face. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather I, you see my face too. Yeah, or things like... Um, photos of our of kids that are put on like Facebook and stuff you would never get to see you know your uncles who lives in the states kids if it wasn't for like Facebook as an example they call it social media it's the internet is very social yeah and I really don't appreciate this guy's tone as this list continues he's starting yeah. to get very condescending yeah he thinks uh it, it does have a little bit of holier than thou virtue signaling kind of vibe to it um and and it's a bit lighthearted. this is a serious decision uh we're making now if we're going to keep this internet going let's uh reason number nine hasn't swayed me let's see what he what he got for reason eight reason number eight it destroys penmanship you know that old-fashioned thing where you used to take a piece of paper and a pen and write a letter the kind of thing where you could tell how the person felt just by the handwriting i'll let you have that one well i still write all the time to this day so i'm always writing things on pieces of paper on post-it notes my penmanship has stayed the exact same as it was when i was in high school university doesn't matter so the, the penmanship thing is is completely empty argument i think i uh, yeah when people invented pens were they like uh, kids aren't going to be able to carve in stone anymore with these new pens. Now when we have the internet. <laughs> like, ink. Yeah, so I, uh, that's dumb, buddy. What a dumb mm. reason. Let's see number, let's, the next one, seven. Reason number seven, it's a health hazard. Tunnel carpal syndrome, tendonitis, and uh, eye strain, just to name a few. Okay, this I agree with. <laughs> it is yeah, a, this happens. This, this, happens. Is, this is a health thing, and, and he said, Tunnel carpal syndrome. I think you mean carpal tunnel. Yeah, tunnel I was just syndrome. gonna ask that. I thought it was the other way around. Well, it's it's a much more well known uh, problem now because so, so many people have it from using keyboards. But I think the bigger thing in considering it a health issue is it's so much easier to stay social without leaving your house, without leaving the couch, uh, meet up with your friends without having to walk to their house and knock on their door or, or whatever. There's so many alternatives. To, uh, to leaving your house and doing physical things that you can do inside. So I think the it's not so much the internet. Well, I guess it is the internet that facilitates it. But thanks to the internet in current modern day technology, um, you need to pay more attention to being physical and kind of push yourself into it, I think. And the internet also teaches you how to be physical. Yeah, so you when you to. want to start doing more exercises, when you want to get healthier, you use the internet as a resource to help you do that. So uh, that totally backfired on this guy's argument. Double-edged sword, I guess. Number six. 
Reason number six, it ties up the telephone lines. Have you ever tried to phone somebody who lives on the internet? So for the, the younger listeners listening in, once upon a time when you wanted to connect to the internet, your your computer would like connect to your phone line, dial a number, you'd hear some weird beeps, buzzes, and grinding sounds, and then all of a sudden information would be flowing from your computer to the internet through your phone line, which makes it so other people in the house can't use the phone. I do remember, I, I grew up in a house where it was like... Um, my dad, stepmom, myself, my brother, and two sisters, all living in one house with a computer in one phone line. And it used to drive me nuts when I wanted to call my friend and my brother, sister, dad, stepmom would be on the internet. And I'd have to go and be like, can you log off just for a minute so I can call so-and-so? My sisters or brother wouldn't do it. So what I used to do is I'd pick up the phone in my bedroom and I'd bang the buttons and and press the you know hang up button i just keep clicking it and, f- and messing with my phone and eventually it would cause a disruption in the internet and it would disconnect them from the internet allowing me to quickly make the call yeah if you picked up the phone while somebody was on the internet it would kick you off yeah and so, it's, it's some cases it would. at my house it didn't i used to have to pr- like mess around a bunch but oh you pick- really like i remember i remember when we were young um it would kick you off if somebody picked up the phone because you'd be halfway through waiting for a page to download like Mm. it was slow line by line like line by line (laughs) you know showing up on your screen and you're waiting to get the information for your project or something and then all of a sudden my sister picks up the phone it's like no No. it took like 25 (laughs) minutes to load that page yeah uh it was a different beast back then um but Problem solved. We don't use our phones for the internet anymore, so we're not going to have to ban it. Let's go to the next one. Developing the technology, pal. Reason number five. It's a secret government or Microsoft plot to rule the world. Do you know how easy it is to track your actions on the internet? Okay, this one's, this is interesting. You're shaking your head no, but the internet now, like, it, the internet isn't this thing that you log on to and, and decide to use. It's everywhere. It's built into everything. And yeah, we're being surveilled in ways you can't even imagine. Like, I, I love the people who are like, I don't have a Facebook account because I don't want, you know, the government spying on me. If the government or foreign governments want to find out stuff about you, they don't need to go on your Facebook account or something. It's You're forever connected with the internet in all these different ways. Uh, I don't believe the internet's primary function is to facilitate and accommodate that surveillance, but it is certainly um, a negative side of the way the internet works here in 2024. I agree. I wasn't shaking my head in disagreement. I was shaking my head in I hate to agree with this guy. Yeah, or shaking your head (laughs) in like, oh, buddy, you have no idea what's coming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was just kind of this is the one thing that that and this is early, early days for him to be kind of talking about this. Yeah, it wasn't something true. that was talked about in the 90s for people who had the Internet. In in the uh, 90s, it was so much easier to be anonymous on the Internet where it's, it's a lot harder now to to hide out on there. We're, we're then like to be surveilled, I think it would have been more complicated. Police forces and even like the FBI and CSIS and all this stuff, they would have been so far behind in their ability to catch, you know, like hackers and this sort of thing. Uh, that has all changed now. I think this dude uh, who made this piece back in 98 had no idea what was coming. Maybe he suspected something was coming, but I dare say it's a lot worse than he would have imagined. Well, like he said, he did spend hours on the internet, so. Yeah, he was ready. Let's hear the next one. Reason number four, it spreads a false sense of the truth. That sort of ranks up there with, if it's in the newspaper, it must be true. <laughs> He's right again. <laughs> Big time right. I you... hate agreeing with this guy because I hate this guy, but. Uh, he's right on this one when you, well, the term fake news, you know, the, that's this idea of like propaganda, fake news, um, all the various disinformation that's spread around on online. It's, 
it's prevalent it's everywhere it's it, constant it all the time it's, all it, the time yeah and it's very sophisticated I, i'm surprised he had this on his list in 98 because I, I wonder how it would have been happening disinformation in 98 like when we in 98 you would go to the grocery store and there'd be like that uh, bizarre newspapers, you know, Bat Boy photographed yeah, with the National Elvis. Enquirer. Yeah, so there would have been like that kind of fake stuff out there. But I, but what would have been like on the internet in '98? I'm just, I'm surprised he said this. There wasn't really a lot of. There was probably a fair amount of news, but it certainly wasn't a source that people gravitated to for mm -hmm. news specifically. And there would have been message boards where people could, you know, chat and all that stuff, but it wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have imagined it would would be this message boards were were typically like um niched like i'm going into a wrestling message board where everyone's talking with about wrestling here's a science fiction movie message board but nowadays we have again like facebook and x and TikTok and all this stuff it's not um it's it's not separated like everybody sees the same stuff for the most part Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a different world and in disinformation, fake news, all that stuff, it can be used so effectively and viciously by so many different people who mean to do well, mean to do you well, or perhaps mean to do you harm. Yeah. That's a complicated one. And I think he was, uh, I'm glad he had that on his list because if there's any reason to get rid of the internet, this may be it. That is the reason. Yeah. yeah. That may, that's the main reason right there. Okay. Let's, let's keep going. Reason number three, it's just a commercial laden form of entertainment. The information highway is becoming so clogged with billboards, it's hard to see the road. By the way, have I mentioned that a lot of my material is available on tape? Call now. Operators are standing by. That I, I, I don't see that the internet's any different than anything else. It's so much content is ad supported. Did people complain about magazines being like every third page is an ad for, you know, this makeup or an ad for this or an ad for that? Ad advertising happens on the internet to prevent people from having like to cover the cost so people don't have to pay to use it so human advertising is a universal mm -hmm. tool it's yeah. it's it's everywhere like you say it's in magazines television everywhere um it's it's not yeah those are the two places that is everywhere magazines <laughs> and television no it is everywhere there's nowhere on, else you get on a public bus you see ads there and they use the money yeah, from those in ads order to, to yeah exactly in order to fund the costs of public transportation uh one venue that they use is is ad ad space on the yeah. buses and, on the subways and i don't have a problem with it because i think it works in everyone's best interest if you visit a website and there's an ad a non-offensive ad up in the corner the website the the cost to operate the website is likely being paid by that advertiser i'm then able to view it without having to pay or something like i, I just think the whole thing if done right and the ads aren't offensive and whatever i thought I think it just works for everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm okay yeah. with the advertising model. I'm not banning the internet for some this of them reason. are. There were some of them though, like maybe in the mid 2000s, it mm. was starting to get annoying when you would have all those pop ups. Yeah, well, actually, like that would have been the technology developed in a way where I don't really see that as much anymore. Mm -hmm. But the but all these windows popping up like. But that would know. have been the '90s, like late '90s and '98 when the, when. The but I found it was at right its now. worst. I found it was at its worst in the mid 2000s around yeah. that time frame. You'd have the window, like a pop up window that would appear above the content that you were reading, and you'd have to close it, or the pop behind where you'd be reading oh, yeah. an article, and then you close your article, and there's all these weird little. Like, and then porn. there was all these windows up that you didn't even know. It was were always up, porn. Yeah. Was, was it? it always porn with you? I don't know. I thought there was pop-ups for everything but. i found it was off in porn <laughs> anyway let's keep moving on here <laughs> next you, one you're finding porn everywhere you go the woods it's in the woods and the internet <laughs> it's, it's the nothing internet. to do with me <laughs> I just, it's on the bus when i'm traveling on the bus i see porn ads <laughs> everywhere let's move on to the next one reason number two it's just not that important you realize there's millions of people out there that don't have computers there's people out there that don't even have televisions it's not that important um i think it is important because what he's what we're deciding right now is if we want to cut off 
a technology that can redefine how we do business, communicate, connect with each other, share information and ideas. I think it's very important. Also, even in, even in that point in time in 98, so much of the economy was getting based off of the internet, yeah. you know, developing in a way and growing in a way because of the internet. So yeah, uh, it, the guy was really, for him to be so bang on on a couple of them, mm-hmm. almost predictive, and then to be so off the map with with these later ones. Yeah, I don't know. Number two, but we're moving mm-hmm. on to the big one now. You ready for this? I'm ready for the big one. The number one reason... We should have banned the internet in 98, according to 1998's knowledge. Here we go. And now the number one reason why they should shut down the internet. It just sucks the life out of you. For heaven's sakes, people, go outside, turn off your computers, maybe go visit a bookstore, read something, maybe go gardening, something like that. Visit a friend. Mm. It sucks the life out of you. I dare say that life sucks the life out of you. And he's pointing at the internet and blaming it on all the problems that the world has. I don't know. I, I don't. I think it's not the internet sucking the life out of us, but maybe the internet has sped everything up a bit. Certainly, the internet can send you down some rabbit holes that might suck the life out of you. But it's always, again, falls back on the user's responsibility mm-hmm. To make sure they're using something in a healthy way. So, again, I think it just depends on the user. Some yeah. people use the technology to develop their lives in a positive way. Some people use it in a negative way. It's like any tool that you're given throughout the development of society. Mm-hmm. Some people will use it for good. Some people will use it for bad. Some people will be affected ne- negatively by it. Some positively. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it's it just really depends on the person. Uh, the internet is a fast growing technology when you think of the entire span of humanity, and we're still getting accustomed to it. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If overall, like, yeah, certainly in our lifetime, if you think of our generation, the internet has changed everything about life it seems in some ways for for better or for the good some ways for the worse but yeah i don't know i think it's about uh using it appropriately just like you know you you compare the internet to a tool that needs to be used appropriately it could also be compared to as a to it could be compared to a product that has to be used appropriately like say for example alcohol like there's nothing there's not really calls to ban alcohol but it can destroy your life if you don't use it right Mm -hmm. or it can enhance your life if you use it appropriately at the appropriate time and place right yeah yeah that's i'll accept that as an example okay yeah yeah we have this guy yeah yeah and this guy is such a the thing that makes this whole piece so annoying is that this guy is a jerk yeah he does come across it's like they they were looking for some kind of an internet article and and they found the worst community theater actor that they could <laughs> like the somebody in the production room is like well my buddy's an actor he'll come in and do it yeah, but he's yeah. terrible yeah i know he's unlikable but he can do it he's available <laughs> yeah yeah he's a really bad actor though i can't stress <laughs> that enough went to see one of his shows and he was booed off stage yeah no i think this guy he's not an actor he's just he was a cbc journalist at the time but he strikes me as just the yeah. worst kind of community theater actor that there is. Maybe a failed Somebody actor who, just, who went yeah. to journalism. Yeah, probably. Uh, long story short, are we going to ban the internet today? I'll try it. Yeah, let's ban it. Okay. Anyone and just see what this? happens. And we'll bring it back if if it's a disaster. Okay. Yeah, I guess we have a time machine. So we'll ban it now. If it doesn't work out, we'll just go back in time and recreate yeah, it. And yeah, yeah. No one will be the wiser. And we'll have no complications doing that. No. Aaron, until next time. Jordan, until next time. Uh, when you read an article, think twice about its accuracy and its truth. Because I, I don't know, I think everything on the internet's fake nowadays. Especially these viral videos. They're always fake. That was the most old man comment I, am an old I think man. I've I am ever an old heard man. you say. They are fake. When I look at all these viral videos and they're always fake. Not even viral videos. I call fake. them viral videos, but you just go on TikTok and it's like 
uh, I uh, go fishing with a magnet. Look what I pulled out. And they pull out like, you know, a, a box of jewels. It's like, what? You know, every video is just like that. It's like, you're telling me that wasn't planted. Yeah, well, they do that on TV too, like Storage Wars and all these garbage shows, you know? Yeah, but at least it's, it's you can tell it's got a healthy dose of like Hollywood magic. But when you're watching it like on TikTok as if it's like someone with their phone out there, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's um, dishonest. Yeah, well, Jordan, until next time, stay out of the woods. I want to thank you for joining us for the discussion tonight. We'll be back to our regular weekly weird news roundups next week. But until then, I want to thank you for helping Aaron and I fulfill our mission here to keep Canada weird. But again, I'm going to call out to you for even greater support. If something weird happens in your neck of the woods, please let us know. We'd love to hear about it and respond to it in some upcoming episodes. If you have any thoughts, opinions, or ideas about any of the points that were raised in this week's episode about banning the internet, we'd love to hear about that as well. You can reach us at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. We're excited to hear from you. Now, before we part, let me end with some thanks. First, a big thanks to Aaron for sharing another evening with me and with you, the listeners of Nighttime. A big shout out to the internet's favorite cult leader, Unicole, who provides our intro and outro voiceovers. And then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you goes out to each and every one of you listening to Nighttime, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. Now on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to the premium feed. Barco, Melissa, and Laura, thank you for going premium. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, you can help us out here in a variety of ways. First of all, a premium feed subscription costs just a couple dollars a month, and that money funds the creation of the show, but it'll also give you the episodes two days early, give them to you ad-free, and give you access to a full back catalog of episodes. If that sounds like something you'd like, you can go premium right now at patreon.com slash nighttime podcast. And even if you don't want to go premium, you can still help the show by sharing this episode on social media and letting all your like-minded friends know what we're doing here. So until next time, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let us know if you see anything weird. Keep Canada Weird is written, hosted, and produced by the Nighttime Podcast. 